Witches with Livingston and Tangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Gogh. And he brings it to ya! Creature features and all creatures. Good evening and welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. If you are unfamiliar with our program, allow me to bring you up to speed. After many years of playing rock and roll music, I became somewhat rather disillusioned with the silliness of that particular endeavor and determined that I should like to retire to the countryside. After purchasing this grand manor on the Northern California coastline, which I might add happens to be infested with spirits for which the estate agent failed to disclose, I moved my entire staff from my chateau in Hollywood to the state in which I am stood at this very moment. Over here would be Livingston. He is the butler and major domo of the Poulter Mansion and oversees the various staff that keep the property in order. Manager of chaos would be more apropos. Quite. And over to this side would be Tangella, who is well-spoken though seldom speaks in front of those she does not know. She became my unwitting ward many years back when she attended a large fancy dress party I threw many years ago in Los Angeles. And after all the other guests had departed, she had stayed behind to disassemble my sub-zero refrigerator in an attempt to extract its Freon gas, and she has not left my side since. Hmm, I stand corrected. Her goal was to obtain HFC-134A, a safer alternative to Freon. In any case, the young lady has become something of a surrogate daughter to me, and while she often manages to wreak havoc wherever we may go, her charm and affable nature lends a bit of amusement to my otherwise quiet and mundane life. Most of the time. Pardon me, Mr. Vendal, but your guest has arrived. Already? He's not supposed to be here for another 20 minutes. What would you have me do with him? No, see him in. Yes, sir. You should probably wrap this up quickly. Indeed. Joining us will be legendary artist Brent Anderson. A prolific artist since 1981, he's worked on comics like X-Men, Green Lantern, Vertigo, and Astro City. He'll show us some of his work, tell us about the industry, and give us his insight on tonight's movie, which is Creature with the Atom Brain from 1955. This classic 50s sci-fi film is about a large zombie with radioactive blood that happens to have an affinity for sacking mob bosses as well as their henchmen. Starring Richard Denning and Angela Stevens, we think you'll find this to be a welcome respite from all the disaster movies we've presented as of late. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of comic book zombie fright, right here on Creature Features. Sarah Daughter. I think it might be time to push this one out of the nest. Stay tuned. Famous comic book artist Brent Anderson. Did you know that if all viewers switched over to Channel 17, they could watch a film called Odd Man Out, 1947. It's got James Mason and Kathleen Ryan. James Mason? James Mason. I love him. Yeah, no, he's wonderful. Anyways, stick with us. I think we got a better movie. We certainly have a better guest because we've got Brent Anderson. 
Famous comic book artist extraordinary. I cannot see your eyes. They're in here. Oh. Is that better? They, no, that's way better. That's and way better. you actually look like a safari man now. I do. No, because safari men don't keep them down. That's the bad guys wear it down. Yeah. So you wear it up and that's that's good. But the good guys don't think don't they wear them like that kind of? No, I think the no. good guys would flip up one part of the brim. Oh yeah, in Australia. Like this, right. Yeah. yeah, Australian. Anyways, welcome to the show. Brent. <laughs> I, you've done everything. I mean, you've done X Men, yes, Astro City, but no Spider Man. Why? I was never asked to do Spider Man. You were never asked. No, mm -mm. that's that's criminal. <laughs> you you'd probably be great. You've probably drawn him on your own, right? I've. He actually swung into an episode of Power Pack. Oh, nice. So he was a guest star. I sh I, I I got one good drawing out of my. 47 year career. Now, moment. is this something that you can concoct on your own or do they have to say, we shall give you permission to put in Spider-Man for a moment? Uh, that was the editor's idea. All who right. was also the writer. Right, right. <laughs> but no, so so it's it's like, you, you, you have to be careful with these characters, right? Because you cannot bring certain ones with certain others, right? Because it's maybe it's a timeline not, or something. It's usually not up to me though. Right. They right. tell me what to draw and who to draw and that's with it. who. You're just like a machine. You just, just like, like a machine. Take pen to paper and produce what they envision. Or I'm like those zombies in the movie tonight. Tonight's movie, a yeah. creature with an atom brain. I have not seen it yet. You have. Yes. And it was one of my movie. favorites when I was a kid. No, that's it. a coincidence. Yeah. Because typically the films we show, all guests did not see or do nor do they like. Oh, I, I loved it. It's a B-grade, wonderful monster movie. What makes it so wonderful? Richard Deming. That's it? Well, no. <laughs> right. But what, what, made this, what made this attract you as a child to this particular film? I just liked monster movies. About That's a good one. Right. Features that are being controlled by evil. Right. You know? And is this reflected in your work? Indubitably. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. All right, well, what do you say we start the film? All right. And we come back, we're going to get some details on everything you've done. Right? right? Sounds good. All right, off we go to Creature with the Atomic Brain, 1955. A good movie, according to Brett. So stick around. See you soon. Where's the take tonight? Not bad, Mr. Hennessy. Almost 20 grand. Good. Tell the boys I'll be with them in a few minutes. May 
Jerry, for deposit tomorrow, 142 $100 bills, $150 bills, the rest, five, ten. <laughs> I told you I'd come back. Remember, Buchanan? Would you hear not Buchanan? I don't look like him, but I am him. Don't you recognize the voice, Jim? I promise to see you die, and I will. <laughs> Turn on the ignition. Now, drive home. He got hit when they shot at him. He might not be able to make it. If his brain is still receptive, he can be directed. Well, what if it isn't? What if the bullets hit one of the brain electrodes? As long as he has an ounce of liquid in his veins, he will return home. I have told you, these creatures automatically try to return to their source of feeding when their energies run low. Well, your creature has helped us get rid of the first one. I see them all die before I'm through. If I had only known when you first offered to help me financially. Dr. Stagg, if it weren't for my money, you'd still be experimenting with cats and dogs in that flea-sized lab of yours in Europe. I made it possible for you to prove your theory with human beings. That is true. But my theory was to use these creatures to help people live. By doing everything that was difficult and dangerous, you just want to see people die. Not just people, Stag. Particular people. And I'll get them. Every single one of them. And after you do what? There'll be nothing we can't do or have. Nobody will be able to stop us. Can't you keep him going any longer? No, I can't keep them breathing longer than a few days. Then the glands deteriorate. They just disintegrate. Is he dead? He never was alive. Different parts of the body die at different times. My next problem is how to keep them working as long as the heart is beating. Does the brain still die first? Always. The brain always dies first. home in bed. Hello, Dr. Walker. I gave him exactly $19,821. All right, wait outside, will you please? Oh, hello, Chet. 
Hi. Hi. Hi, Dave. What does it look like? Yeah, I guess it's as good as mine. Robbery behind it? Yeah, it could be. Yet whoever did it left over six grand in the safe. Mm -hmm. Maybe he didn't want to get into a higher bracket. Oh, brother. How did he get it? <laughs> How didn't he get it? Mm, neck's been broken and also a spine, just by twisting it. The murderer must have had the strength of an ape. Hennessy's guard saw him, so he'd look like any other man. Don't tell me he bent these bars. That's what Hennessy's boys say. Killer came in and got out that way. I'd hate to meet him on a dark night. Bullet holes, huh? Uh, Hennessy's boy shot at him. Hit him, too. Look at the trail of blood. We found some blood on the road. You know, there's something screwy about this whole thing. He must have been hit bad to lose that much blood, yet he made it to his car and got away. Mm -hmm. well, whoever it was was certainly careless. These fingerprints are perfect. Isn't that strange? What is? Uh, turn out the lights for a minute, will you? See it? Yeah. Oh. The fingerprints are luminous. Yes, and the, the footprints and the blood. Uh, turn on the lights again, huh? Hmm. What do you make of that? Huh. I'm a district attorney, not a chemist. Ask Chet. What about it, Chet? Wish I knew. Let's take this bag to the lab and make a test on it. Mm -hmm. I'll send the fingerprints to Washington. Maybe they can trace them there. Don't let anyone in there. Have you got any idea who did it? Was it a robbery? What's he inside in us? Got nothing to say now, boys. Doctor, how did anybody break through those bars in there? Maybe he ate all his vitamins. Uh -huh. Vitamins? solution of hematin. Two absorption bands between the Fraunhofer lines. Oh, cut the double talk, Chet, and break it down to plain English. Take a look. This so-called blood is a chemical composition. Looks like a bunch of crystals to me. Exactly. There are crystals in that concoction. Now, what do you mean, concoction? Yeah, I'll show you. Adrenaline. Sodium hydroxide. Blood sugars. Throws the beam to the right dextrous. No hemoglobin traceable. No hemoglobin? But it isn't blood. Right. Like I said before, it's a chemical composition. Here, I'll put it in the centrifuge and we'll see what else it's made of. Why is that stuff luminous? That's right. Why is it luminous, Chet? Just as I thought. This so-called blood is highly radioactive. Dangerously so? Plus nine. Is that a lot? Not to kill a man if he's exposed to it long enough. Well, that's about all we can do for tonight. Let me know when you hear from Washington on those fingerprints. Well, what'd you find out? Yeah, how about giving us a load on it? Yeah, give us a lead, will you? You want the truth? Yeah. All right, then, according to the evidence, Hennessy was murdered by a creature with atom rays of superhuman strength and a creature that cannot be killed by bullets. Creature? <laughs> you don't expect us to believe that. No. Big joke. Just for that, I'll misspell your name. I don't blame them. I don't believe it myself, and I was with you. Welcome back to the show. If you are just joining us, you're late, but we'll forgive you this time. We've got Brett Anderson, and he's he's a comic book graphic novel designer. What, uh, what's your official title? Cartoonist, illustrator. I, you know, that's the I easy. don't know. Cartoonist. It's the simplest. Cartoonist. Yeah. 
there's some of these people, they pull out a full resume and it's like, oh, my title is seven hyphenated words on my business card. And I like the fact that you keep it simple. In any case, we're watching Creature with the Atom Brain. You know, I said Atomic before. You did. But Atom Brain and Atomic Brain would be the same, would they not? That's what I thought. Unless they're talking about a brain the size of an atom. Right? <laughs> and that would be, you know, there'd be no story. Somebody with a, size, a brain the size of an atom could not do much damage, could they not? Right. Anyways, uh, so far the movie, uh, we haven't seen much, of, but we have seen some television control of a zombie bloke. And uh, 1955, were you around in 1955? I was born the month before this movie was released. All right. So we're the same age. This. So do you remember having television in your home in 1955? No. Right. I don't that remember because I was like zero years old. Right. So maybe there was one and you just don't recall. I don't, I don't, I don't recall. All right. Yeah. Yeah. My theory is that most homes, at least here in America, did not have televisions in 1955. Some people did, like the rich people, maybe. I don't know. Anyways, how did you get into this whole comic thing? Boy, uh... I used to create my own comics on binder paper with right. pens and, and whatnot after I found out about Marvel Comics. So, but there must have been a stage before that point where you said, I wish I could do this. I always drew. I always drew. When, right? I, was, when I was a kid, you know, before. I, my mother didn't allow comics in the house, actually. Oh. She thought there were better things to read than comic books. She grew up in the 50s. Right. She was a teenager in the 50s during right. the Frederick Wortham period when they were coming down on comics as the explanation for why there was juvenile delinquency. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my so, goodness. So she didn't like comics until in junior high school, I met a friend who showed me not only Marvel comics and DC comics, but um, he was actually drawing and writing his own comics. Oh, he was? And he was the one that inspired me. Wow. This is in the seventh grade. So the style of, of art that you did prior was it similar or was it? No, it was more like trying to do paintings and right. uh, uh, portraits. And things well, I could like see why your poor mum became angry. She had a potential Rembrandt in the making. <laughs> and they started and doing comic sudden, books. Right, you're, you're doing these line <laughs> drawings as a comic. So that's, I, could, I could see her problem with that particular issue. But actually, but actually, I started sneaking comics into the house, calling them magazines. Oh, as you should. You just change the cover, right? Well, I would just, she would say, well, what did you buy at the drugstore? And I'd say, oh, a couple of magazines. And well done. She says, well, I hope you're not buying too many of those. You know, I, I venture to guess that she knew. She did. Right. Because right. I had a pile this high under my bed when she finally, when I was at school, she went oh, and she looked underneath it. and right. she looked at them, she read some and she goes, these aren't like the comics that 1950s, the gore and the goose. And your response should have been... It could have been a different kind of magazine, Mum. Yeah, that's right. All right, what do you say we get back to this film? And then uh, we're going to do some letters uh, when we return, but we will have you back after letters, and we're going to talk about uh, some of your work, and you're going to show us something, right? Yes. And you're going to lose a hat as well. Wonderful. It's getting warm over these lights. There you go. It does get warm in here. All right, off we go back to Creature with the Atom Brain, 1955. We will see you soon with letters. Chet. Sleeping? Sleeping at this hour? Yes, at this hour. 7.30? Well, don't blame me, Joyce. I don't ask him to be a cop. Get him up. We get some important. Where's Penny? Having breakfast. Mm. Uncle Dave! Oh, how's my little sweetheart this morning, huh? I feel fine, Uncle Dave. <laughs> There's some coffee in there, Dave. Thanks. I can use it. Well, Penny and me are going to have a little tater tater, aren't we, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. I never tasted a tater tater uh -huh. before. Chet. 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 Wake up. Chet, not now. Oh, name a better time. Oh, Dave's here. <laughs> oh, 
Now you can wait till I kiss my wife. Oh, Jeff, you'll hear us. <gasps> so what? We're married. But he's not. Well, then let him find out what he's missing. <laughs> oh. Jeff. He says it's important. Important? Mm-hmm. About that murder last night? Yeah. Must be. You didn't tell me anything about it. I don't believe in talking shop when I'm home. You probably read all about it anyway. And when you do, you won't believe it. I'll tell him you'll be right out. Oh, this door sticks. Remember, Mrs. Walker, you had your chance. <laughs> Come on, open up. Tell me a story first. Oh, it's too early in the morning for stories. I always tell a story to my dolly. Do you like her? Oh, I'm crazy about her. What's her name? Henrietta. Henrietta. And I used to go with a girl named Henrietta. What happened to her? Uh -huh. What happened to her shouldn't happen to your doll. She married a con man. <laughs> That's not the kind of a story to tell kids. Hiya, Penny. Hello, Daddy. Hurry up, Penny. You'll be late for school. Come on. Oh, and a girl. Goodbye now. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, Uncle Dave. Have fun, Penny. Ah, that's the story of a cop's life. Hello, Daddy. Goodbye, Daddy. What's up? You better sit down first. Hmm? I just came from the bureau and checked the murderer's fingerprints. His name is Willard Pierce. They let me have it from the files. Petty theft, fraud, three months in prison, tubercular... How could a tubercular man have strength enough to break those bars like that? You think that's something? Answer this one. How could a dead man have strength enough to do it? Deceased? Yeah, and I used to think Scrabble was tough. When did he die? Well, according to that, 24 days ago. Well, that doesn't make sense. You're the smart one. If it doesn't make sense to you, imagine how it sounds to me. They got a file on this guy? Yes, I copied it. Died of asphyxiation on the 22nd of last month. Body delivered to the city morgue. Copy of coroner's report was attached. Have you checked with the morgue? I got two of the boys doing it now. Does McGraw know? I called him at his home. He told us to meet him in his office. Hello. Oh, yes, he's here. For you, Dave. Yes? Uh-huh. Be right over. Remember that cylinder we took out of Hennessy's dictaphone? Like to hear it? Sure. Come on. Bye, Penny. Now perhaps we can all relax for a little while. Bye, honey. Call you later. Chet, you didn't have breakfast. No. Chet, it's not healthy to... Bye, George. Buchanan. If you know that, you know why I'm here. It's no use, McGraw. I said I would live to see you die. I am watching you now. Come back home. Come home. Come back home. Mary for deposit tomorrow. $142 $100 bills. $150 bills. The rest, five, ten. I told you I'd come back. That's when the dictaphone was knocked out of his hand. Or oh, he dropped it. Anyone recognize that voice? I do, and I don't. I just, just got a feeling that I've heard it before. It'd be hard to place it anyway, but the killer's voice sounded more mechanical than Hennessy's. Do you notice it? Yeah, it's like a, like a recording of a recording. I told you I'd come back. 
Not much to tie on to there. Well, could have been some big loser who swore to get even. Or some gambler he rousted around. Anyone and anything. Anyway, there's no doubt that he bent the bars and came in through the window. We could hear the sound of the glass crashing. Listen, McGraw must be waiting for us now. Oh, but that's the DA. Tell him we're on the way up. Hello? Yeah. McGraw. McGraw was found in his garage, murdered. I'll meet you down there. I want to pick up some equipment first. Okay. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. My goodness, Tangella, did you know that in this copy of TV Guy, there is a coupon from Clairol for a free bottle of summer blonde hair color. She's kind of summer blonde already, is she not? Perhaps. Somewhat. Yeah, maybe you can order it for your beard. Why would I do that? Because it'd be fetching. I don't want to be fetching. You could use a little fetching, old man. All right, anyways, enough of that. How about some mail? Cynthia Wilder. Cynthia is wilder than most other Cynthias, right? I wouldn't Maybe know. Cynthia Wildest would be more wild than Cynthia Wilder. All right, she goes, uh, just found your channel on YouTube, and I love it. Better than Sven Gulli and much better movie selections. Your guests are also great. Tangela and Livingston are adorable. I can understand why you say she's adorable. Why is he adorable? He does not have summer blonde in his beard. And I'm not adorable. Yeah, I agree. Um, of course, you, Sir Vincent, I'm in love. And she put a smiley love face. Yes, I noticed that. Smiley love face. I enjoy watching Keep Up the Good Work Blessings from your number one fan. P.S. Can you please show a series of The Exorcist Part 1, 2, and 3? Um, we showed, which one did we show? We showed uh, 3, was it not, on the Friday show? I think we did Exorcist 3. Some time back, and uh, we'll bring that back someday, right? Maybe? Perhaps. Who knows? Anyways, uh, thanks for writing, Cynthia. Next up, Mr. Livingston. Pete Bishop from Fort Lauderdale. Pete Bishop from Fort Lauderdale. He goes, uh, Dear Vincent, I'd like to make a guest suggestion, if I may. Sammy Hagar. Isn't he a country singer? No, he's, he's a rock guy. I know you don't really want to do anything with rock anymore, but Sammy is a legend. Not only can he sing, but he can play guitar at the same time, too. And who isn't moved by the talent so evident in songs like I Can't Drive 55 and Three Lock Box? I'm sure you have plenty to talk about, including this, his club Cabo Wabo. Again, I'm sure you'd have plenty to talk about, including his club Cabo Wabo and Tequila of the same name. When you book, I'd like to suggest a movie as well. This is enough of that. Give me another one. Douglas Black. Douglas Black. Any chance you might come to Wonderfest in Louisville, Kentucky? It is a horror sci-fi expo uh, we do every year, usually the first weekend in June. I think you should be nominated for a Rondo Award. Well, that's a nice letter. Sammy Hagar. Who, who writes to me about Sammy Hagar? People. It's like me writing to you saying, oh, you should talk to Mr. Butler Butler because he's a better butler than you. Right? I doubt that. No, exactly. And that's why I doubt about Sammy Hagar. All right. Uh, 
Wonderfest in Louisville, Kentucky sounds wonderful, although uh, we've not been invited, have we not? We have not as of yet. So we have not been invited, and it's rude for us to presume that we have an open invite. So that's, that's a long way to go to be turned away at the door, right? Indeed. Louisville, Kentucky, we show up and they say, you don't have an invite. Be gone. Be gone, Creature Features. You know, I, it will never end. There'd be some way to you to manage this, perhaps. I shall try. Major Domo. All right. Uh, let's see. And then uh, I th you think we should be nominated for a Rondo Award? Yeah, you know, we have been nominated. I think you should say we should win one, but uh, I don't think it'll ever happen. We don't. We don't get any awards, right? Perhaps. We're not very we awarded. We might get lucky one day. Oh, very nice. She got a pelt. All right. Can you just like? Keep it down for a second before you fly off on that thing. All right, next up, Mr. Livingston. And one more from oh, Joseph Tomko. Oh, don't give me that Tomko. face. Joseph Tomko. In Thailand. Thailand. All right. Uh, he goes, uh, oh, there is a, oh, a photo. This is wonderful. He goes, I'm a zombie English teacher in a Thailand high school. We think it is always a pleasure to watch your presentations and it's easy to feel part of your family. See, we do that. We make people feel like family, right? Uh, That's right. Except for the housekeepers. They only knew. I just had a, a minor exchange there. We'll be having a staff meeting later. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think she got the better end of the deal. Uh, let's see. It's uh, always a pleasure to watch your presentations. It is easy to feel like part of your family. Love your guests and dialogues. And Tangella Livingston and Vincent too. Creature features remind me of watching Chili Billy on Chilla Theatre as a youngster. We hear about that name a lot, do we not? No. Yes, we do. Now Chili Billy on Chilla Theatre. We've heard this many times before. I do not recall. All right, that's because you, yeah, old man. Thank you for bringing dark fun into this serious world, Joseph Tomko. And he enclosed a photo. We'll put a big one up. But here it is. And he's a zombie. And he says he's a teacher in Thailand. Is that right? Yes. High English school. teacher in a Thailand high school. He must be fun if he comes dressed as a zombie, right? There's no better way to learn English than to be taught by a zombie, I think. Is that it? That would be it. That is it for letters. If you'd like to send us a letter of your own, go to hellocreaturefeatures.com. It's a little part of our website that tells you how to send us uh, an email or a package in the mail. Or if you'd like to send us a bus load of wonderful people with cash in hand to pass to Mr. Livingston. I don't recommend it. Then uh, do the first two. Forget about the third. We'll be right back after the next segment of the film, so don't go away. Looks like the same job pulled on Hennessy. Did you find any prints? Plenty. I asked the Bureau to call me here as soon as they get a line on them. How long has he been dead? About an hour. Must have happened as he was getting ready to go to the office. Who found him? His wife. She's in the house now. I had to give her a sedative. Take him away, boys. Captain Harris, I can't figure this one. The jaw's broken. Neck, too. It wasn't a weapon. The bruises looked to me as though they'd been done by a fist. But McGraw was a husky guy. I'd never seen a case where a man's neck was broken by the sheer force of a grip. guys must have hated his guts. Raw's enemies were usually friends of Hennessy's, and yet they were both killed in the same way and by the same person. The thing. Thing? How about a statement, Captain Harris? About time we had something official. As soon as we have something to say, we'll say it. You tie up McGraw's murder with the Hennessy murder? Not until we know more about it. You want on the phone, Captain. It's in the house. Geiger counter, I want to check the car for radioactive emanations. Emanations? Say, Dr. Walker, didn't you find radioactivity in the Hennessy killing? Mm. Well, then that would connect the two murders, wouldn't it? Well, yes and no. It's 
not a conclusive fact, just an approach. That story you gave us last night about a creature charged with Adam Ray's, it's on the level then, huh? I told you it was. Hey, we had a scoop and didn't know it. Let's get out of here. It was the Bureau. The prints belonged to a Vernon Dunn. He died a few weeks ago. And that's not all. Get this. The boys just checked the morgue. Eight bodies have disappeared. Call the inspector and tell him I want to talk to him as soon as possible. And ask him to have the mayor there and the commanding general of this military area. General? We're going to need all the cooperation we can get on this one. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Dick Cutting with today's commentary on the news. Well, as you know, today's big story hinges around the killing of District Attorney McGraw, whose body was found today in his garage, murdered in much the same manner as Hennessy was. What connection the murder of McGraw can possibly have with Hennessy, a gangland boss, is unknown at present. Dr. Chet Walker of the police laboratory has given out a fantastic story, so incredible that one can lend it little credence. Dr. Walker is of the opinion these crimes are being perpetrated by dead men. Yes, I said dead men. Restored to life in some unknown manner by being charged with atom rays, which uh, give them superhuman strength and makes them impervious to bullets. Well, if you want to believe that story, you can. This Walker must be a pretty smart cookie. Mm, he has imagination. The kind of imagination that may prove dangerous to us. You mean the kind of imagination that could prove dangerous to him? About time to feed them, isn't it? Hello, Walker. Captain? Mayor Bremer? General Saunders. This is Captain Harris and Dr. Walker. Walker's in charge of our lab. I hope, Dr. Walker, you've called us here to assure us the stories about dead men walking our streets is only a hoax. I wish they were. What'd you find out about those bodies stolen from the morgue? Well, according to the records, they're to be cremated. They were placed in coffins and delivered to the city crematory. May I ask how this concerns me? You can be of great help to us, General, as I'll explain in a moment. But first, I'd like to give you and the mayor a picture of what's been taking place so that you can understand exactly what we're up against. Couldn't those bodies have been stolen by some of those uh, creatures on or before arrival? Well, they could have, but that wouldn't explain them uh, coming back to life. What makes you so sure they were alive? What makes me so... Well, they were walking around, weren't they? It says you found fingerprints. You yourself said these dead people committed the crimes? Yes, those are the facts. But I'm afraid we'll have to depart from our usual approach to get anywhere in this case. I wish, Dr. Walker, you'd make yourself a little clearer. Well, let me give you a very primitive example. Do you remember Faraday's experiment with a frog's leg? I flunked chemistry one three times. I remember Faraday's experiment. Good. Then you'll remember that Faraday applied energy, in that case electricity, to the leg which had been severed from its body. It moved. <laughs> frog legs. I don't see the parallel. People of that day wouldn't believe that the leg of a dead animal could move, but Faraday proved it. We know why. Yes, now we know why and take our knowledge for granted. In our case, which is as mysterious to us as Faraday's was in his time, we found traces of energy, energy which would increase the strength of any animal tremendously. Radioactivity. Well, you've lost me. All right, Chet, what you're trying to do now is throw away everything we've learned so far about life and death and start from scratch. And just how do you propose to do this? Well, we have certain clues. One very definite one. In both of the murders, radioactive emanations were found. Now, that's where you come in, General. We, we'll have to find the source of these emanations. Now, I want to use Air Force planes and trucks equipped with instruments which can track down that source. I'll see that you get the trucks, and I'll call Colonel Roberts at Monroe Air Force Base about the planes. He'll give you all the cooperation you need. We'd certainly appreciate that. Tell him I'll be down to talk to him at, say, 3 o'clock. Goodbye, Dr. Walker. Thank you. Good day, gentlemen. Of all things to happen under my administration, keep me posted on this. And suppose we do find the source. Then we'll be able to find the cause. That car in 
front. Get it. Wreck it. Drive into it. Find out. It may concern us. Come back. Stop. Hello. This is Mr. Livingston. It would appear that I have been tasked yet again to deliver another plea intended to separate you from your hard-earned money. This program now has its own channel and associated apps that allow you to watch the entire Creature Features library and much more. Entitled Creature Features TV, this is a system that works much like Netflix or Hulu. Besides early access to all the new Creature Features episodes, You'll also have access to many other offerings and some archival episodes of the original show with Mr. Bob Wilkins. You'll also have exclusive access to a new Creature Feature show that will be introduced soon and will not be available anywhere else. Your generous but modest monthly subscription fee will also greatly assist in the continued production of the show, so there's that as well. Miss Tangela has asked me to inform you that if you subscribe to Creature Features TV, she will be sure to create more dancing videos just for you. I think not. So please visit www.creaturefeaturestv.com to learn more. Thank you for your time. Welcome back to the show. You know, Brent, this film, Creature with the Atom Brain, was the name of a song for one band. And then uh, another band in Belgium made it the name of their band. Really? That's too long. The, yes, Creature with the Atom Brain. Right. Imagine seeing that on a marquee. It would take up all the letters in the in the bloke's collection of letters for the marquee. In the, I cannot see your eyes anymore. What's up with the hat? Oh. My goodness. There you go. Who needs yeah. a hat when it's not raining, right? And there's not no sun. Here. Yes. No sun here. <laughs> what in God's name am I looking at here? That's my first fanzine. The first, what's the difference between a fanzine and a magazine? Magazine's professional, a fanzine's amateur. 1972, is that right? 1972. 1972. Venture, a very nice cover. And, and you drew all this. That's incredible. This well, is... I didn't draw all of it. You didn't draw all of it. I was, uh, I was the... Tell me when I hit something you That's drew. That's it, Grimley's Tales. Grimley's Tales. So this is all him. All right, we'll put a big one up, it's a little I think, cartoon maybe. Character. Sure. Yeah. This is wonderful. So this... This is like classic. This is what I think of when I see comics. Is is this type of book? You know, these things they have now. They look like photographs, mm -hmm. right? That's not a comic. That's like something else, right? What do they call those very detailed comics? I don't think there's a particular. No, no. It's just you. It's very detailed. It's high resolution comics. Yeah. Would that work? Yeah. yeah, I like the lower resolution, like what you, you did here. But of course, this was, you were just a young lad when you did this, right? Right. And how many of these did you put up? Boy, I don't remember. Maybe, f I think we printed 200. 200? This is it? And or this is one of 200? Yeah. Oh, how wonderful. My goodness. So things went uphill from here, right? I mean, this is the first work. And then after that, you did what? 
I started drawing my own comics. Right. I had been drawing my own comics, but then I started working towards going to New York to break into the industry. And I went in 1976 in the summer. So are you from this area? Uh, San Jose. San Jose, California. right. Yeah. So you, you, you decide, I'm going to go to New York because that's where all the big comic well, people you, are. You had, in those days, you couldn't do it right. from a distance. Remote, you had actually right. had to go to the offices and walk in and say, hey, hire me. Right, right. And how did that go? It went well. Right. Yeah. Who hired you? Marvel. Marvel. And that would be what year? 1976. 1976, Marvel Comics in New York City. So how long did you live in New York? Six months, the first tryout. Oh, really? But unfortunately, I couldn't draw well enough or fast enough to my liking to really make a living doing it. $25 a page was what they were paying. Oh, wow. In 1976? 1976. So we could probably times that by three. And how long does it take you to do a page? Uh, a day. $75 a day. For pencils, just pencils. In pencil, 1970. That's not bad money. But no, $25. The rent is, $25 okay. uh, but, but $25 in 1975 was about $75 in today's money. Was it? No. I think it's about more like $200 in today's money. Maybe. <laughs> so you're right, $200 a day. You could live off $200 a day. Maybe not in Manhattan. Well, I had three friends at oh. the time. So we were all sharing a place in Clifton, New Jersey. Right. Well, you know, I don't blame you. I mean, it's, 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 it's difficult to live in that city. I've tried. Yeah, it's, it's quite difficult. It's a lovely place. I love New York. Can I t tell you a brief story about two weeks we spent there? Tell me in the next segment. Let's go to the, uh, uh, back to the movie. And then when we come back, I'm going to hear this story from you. And it's as horrible as a movie, I tell you. I love horrible stories. <laughs> We're a horror show. It's what we do here. That's right. All right. Stick around. We're going to get back to the film. And when we come back, Brent is going to tell us a horrible story. <laughs> Stick around. You. Oh, who did you think it was? Don't tell me strangers are in the habit of... <laughs> I was wondering if you'd be home in time for dinner. <laughs> That's not true, Chad. Is it? Better hide it from Penny. But how can I hide a thing like... Please, Joyce. I'm tired and I'm hungry and I'm... Frankly, I don't know how. I don't know any more about it than it says right there. Look, how we fix for a nice cold martini? Coming right up, Chet. Penny's outside playing. Well, what about it? Well, is it safe? Oh, there seems to be some sort of a definite pattern. Can't put my finger on it, but I do know that Hennessy and McGraw were killed for a reason. What's all right, then? Well, for a while. I don't think they've gotten around to indiscriminate killings yet. Yet? Hi, Daddy. Hi, uh, Penny. <laughs> Where's the paper, Mommy? I want to read the funnies. Oh, it didn't come today, dear. Oh, then I'll put it on TV. Uh, no, Penny. It's broken, Penny. We'll have to have a man over to fix it. Yeah. Look, why don't you play with Henrietta? She's a bad girl, and I'm punishing her. Oh, did you spank her? I put her in her bed and told her she can't look at TV all week. <laughs> You're a tough one, you are. Ah, oh, thanks, honey. I've been looking forward to this all day. I'll go. Hello, Uncle Dave. Hi, Penny. How are you? Oh, it's you. Oh, you don't seem particularly happy to see me. There comes a time in every woman's life when she'd like to be alone with her husband, if only for a few minutes. How come you never got married, Uncle Dave? He'd be a bigamist, Penny. He's already married to your father. Want a drink, Dave? No, not while I'm on duty. <laughs> well, I'm not on duty. You will be when you hear what I've got to tell you. Mm -hmm. Penny, will you please go to your room? Why? I didn't do anything. I know, dear. It's just that Daddy and Uncle Dave want to be alone. I won't bother them. Go to your room this minute, Penny. All right, but I always let you listen when I talk to Henrietta. 
Okay, let's have it. Look, I'm not a child. And this is my house. You're not going to put me out of it. The only time my wife talks is when I'm ready to go to sleep. All right. I'll get dinner. Remember you said this morning that you were thrown because Hennessy and McGraw were both killed in the same way and by the same thing, yet they were always on opposite sides of the fence? Well, what about it? Well, that worried me, too, so I checked back on both of them and found that they were on the same side of the fence once. Well, when was that? About ten years ago, when you first came in at the police lab. Hennessy and McGraw helped convict Frank Buchanan. Buchanan? The name rings a bell, but not too clearly. Buchanan was a top mobster around these parts. He practically ran the city. When McGraw became DA, he took out after him. Well, where does Hennessy come in? Well, Hennessy was Buchanan's number two man. He wanted the number one slot, so he turned on him. Yeah, I remember something about it now. Wasn't Buchanan shipped off to Europe? That's right. He got five years in deportation. I don't get the connection. Listen to this. I got out of the newspaper files. No sooner was sentence pronounced than Buchanan leaped to his feet, screaming to McGraw, I'll get you for this, you and everyone who squealed on me. I'll come back and see you die, every single one of you. Get it? That voice on the dictaphone. I told you I'd come back. That's right. It's the first thing I thought of, too. Yeah. But you just said he was deported. I'm not saying it's him, but it's a lead. It's the only connecting link I could come up with. Why, any guy should want to kill both McGraw and Hennessy. Did you check with the authorities over there? Well, I cabled them and just got this answer. Frank Buchanan resided in Rome, Via Lachula number 11, house vacated, left no forwarding address. Well, he could still be anywhere in Europe. I cabled the chief of police in Rome, asked him to investigate further, and cabled me as soon as he had a line on him. Were there any others who helped convict Buchanan? Two others who were in with him, and the fellow who was the assistant district attorney, Lester Banning, he's now in private practice. Think they should be warned? I'm having the boys round him up now. They should be in my office any minute. Well, let's go. What about dinner? Oh, keep it warm, honey. I'll be back in an hour or two. Sorry, Joyce. I'll bet you are. One for the road? Oh, no, no, dear. I'm back on duty. <coughs> oh, nice to see you, Mr. Banning. Thank you, Captain. This is Dr. Walker, head of our crime lab. Doctor, Manning. And this is Jason French, who used to be Buchanan's accountant. And Don here used to be his gunsel. I don't like that word. Paid killer. Like it better? Look, I've been traveling straight, and I don't know what I was brought here for, but it's a bum rap. I want to see a lawyer. Now tell me, Captain, what's this all about? I called you here to warn you that your lives may be in danger. Is Buchanan back? What makes you say that? At first Hennessy, then McGraw. He said he'd get us, but I didn't know he was back in the country. His sentence wasn't changed. How could he be back? If he's in this country, he's here illegally. Now, if you take my advice, you'd all go to jail for protection and stay there until we can find out whether it's Buchanan or not who's behind all this. Not me. I work too hard to get out of jail. It's for your own good. Think my wife would believe that? she think I went back to packing a rod. What about you? I have a good business now. Tax auditor, public accountant. If I went to jail, my reputation would be ruined. I don't think it's necessary, Captain. Particularly since there's no proof that Buchanan is back in this country. Mm, all right. But I am going to give you protection 24 hours a day, no matter where you are. You got that, Tom? Right. Have some of the boys drive him home. Now, if an attempt is made to get any one of them next, then we'll know for sure it'll complete the pattern. That's the hard way to find out. This is from the chief of police in Rome. Attention, Captain David Harris. Buchanan's house converted to laboratory abandoned for over six months. Arrival cages with dead dogs, monkeys, etc. Discovered Buchanan known to have been associated with German scientist named Steig in lab operation who also has disappeared. If find any additional information, we'll advise Rome chief of police. Dogs, cats, monkeys. That's the way experimentation usually starts. Starts? Only one step from animals to human beings. Captain Harris sent me to relieve you. A little early, but why complain? And 
with the murder of Jason Franchot last night, I must apologize for my recent skepticism regarding these radioactive creatures. It seems they do exist and they are prowling the street. Police Chief Camden assures us that they are doing everything in their power to get to the source of these beings. With the cooperation of the military, planes and helicopters equipped with radium finders are now overhead. And strange looking trucks similarly equipped are now at this moment prowling through the streets of our city to track them down. This is Peter calling from Southern California. I haven't seen anything new on YouTube, so I'm hoping that this call will be some kind of support that will help you guys. And I hope things are going good. I hope you're going to continue on. And uh, I'm just calling to give that good vibe. So uh, keep on keeping on, brothers. Bye. You know, this film should have been called Creatures with the Atom Brains, right? Yes. I assume there's just going to be one. Oh, there's a whole bevy of them. A whole bevy of them. Like this book. This book is a bevy of your art, right? <laughs> this is incredible. Thank you. You did all these drawings. That is fantastic. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to put up a couple big ones here, here in a moment, but uh, this is incredible work, very detailed, much like what I was speaking of before. And maybe he did become the Rembrandt that his mother always wanted him to be, right? Maybe. Maybe, yes. Well, she's proud of me. She's told me this all. She should be proud. She's still around. Yep, she, she is. is. Oh yep. my goodness. Wow, well, that's good. That's nice to have a mother live so long, to see this type of success. And this, this is like, this is quite a thick book. That's a lot of work, and you've done multiple of these, right? Yes. There will ultimately be, I think, seven volumes of the Metro book. That's fantastic. With about 20 issues in each book. Well, we're going to look at another one in a moment, but you promised me a horrible story, and oh, I yes. want to hear it. First time we went to New York, we were looking for a place in New York City to stay. And a couple of my friends, they went out, and they found an apartment in a hotel. It was a transient hotel. We had two rooms and a bathroom and a refrigerator. That was it. That was it. The, but the rent was, was good. I imagine it would be. So we went out, went shopping. We looked in the refrigerator, and there were little baby cockroaches all over the inside of the refrigerator, kind of like that, that, that insect movie that I remember seeing. So we cleaned it up, went to the store, got our food, came back, and there were more insects in there. We go, where the hell did they come from? And then we looked in the cracked molding of the door of the refrigerator. And the, the molding was just jam-packed full of little tiny baby cockroaches all running around. And you know, that is more frightening than this film. <laughs> I, I, you know, I think what we might do next time is we'll take a camera, reenact this, <laughs> instead of showing uh, this, this, you know, I, Telezombies is one thing, but uh, mini fridge cockroaches is an entirely different matter. What was that movie with Donald Pleasance where the cockroaches come and get him? <laughs> that sounds like an ep uh, a, a segment of a Twilight Zone. Creep or... show. Creep, creep show? show, yes. Creep show. Creep show. Right, all right. That was Creep show one. All right. We showed three. Oh, no, two. We showed one of the creep shows, but not the first one. We couldn't get the first one. Yeah. All right, what do you say we get back to this film? Yes. All right, when we come back, uh, we're going to take another look at a different copy of Astro City. We will see you soon.
Excuse me, please. Let's have some beer, please. Thank you. Hey, you forgot your change. This is a sawbuck. Two bits in the till, 975 in my pocket. <laughs> now that's what I call a tip. <laughs> you from water and power? 5.2. What's this all about, anyway? I'm probing for radioactivity. Is there uranium around here? I'm going to call my lawyer and find out if I own the mineral rights. <laughs> who is sitting here? Search me. He went out the back way. You know who he is? Never saw him before. Hey, don't wash that glass. <laughs> he never washes them anyway. He leave anything else here? No. Oh. this. This ten spot hot? Hotter than you think. This is an international who's who of the medical profession. Here's what it says. Wilhelm Steig, born in Stuttgart, Germany in 1893. University Berlin, Zurich, Milan. 1948 Harmon Prize for his research in amygdala stimuli. Amygdala stimuli? What's that? Ultra shortwave stimulations to specific parts of the brain, producing involuntary movements of the body. It's highly specialized stuff. <laughs> yeah. A number of stories have been published about amygdala stimulation of monkeys. Here's one of them. Appropriations have been made for research and development. And there's a doctor in Madrid who's made great advances since this article was published. Have you been uh, conducting any experiments here at the hospital? No, but I have a short film that I told you about. Would you like me to run it? Well, I'd appreciate it. Fine. Draw the curtains, will you? This animal looks content, doesn't it? You wouldn't suspect that it has 18 electrodes inserted in its skull. Turning this switch releases a small amount of ultra-short waves. Those electrodes are tuned to specific frequencies. As long as the impulse is released, the dog barks. By applying another impulse of different frequency, the dog immediately falls asleep. It will lie there as long as the stimulus is active. Another impulse, will make it vicious, docile. Hunger can be induced, or it can be made to resent its food. Amygdala stimulations, somatomotor and visceromotor effects. Does this demonstration satisfy your curiosity? Almost. Try my special mixture. Thanks. This experiment was done on live animals. Of course. Do you think it could be applied to dead ones? Dead ones? Well, offhand, I'd say no. The, the command impulse is so small, less than a millionth of a watt, that only the animal's body energies could supply the reactions. If you could replace the body energy from an outside source, say with uh, radioactive energies, do you think you'd get the same results? Well, your question is much too abstract to be answered at this moment, Dr. Walker. Do you think an experiment on humans would have the same result as on animals? We haven't arrived at that stage of our experiment yet. Could it be possible that somebody else has tried and already succeeded? Are you trying to connect the experiments with animals, with mysterious events of our city? It would answer the riddle, wouldn't it? 
Remote controlled creatures. Their brains powered by atomic energy roaming the streets, directed from a central point. Utterly fantastic. Yes. Yes, he's here. It's for you, Doctor. Yes? Oh, yes, Dave. Send the glass and that bill over to the lab at once. That bird must be radiating in the dark. I, I don't understand how he can stay alive with all that radium poisoning in his system. German accent, huh? Better have them search every house within a 10-block radius. I didn't even get that close to you. What did you ever leave here for? The pain, the pain in my hand was killing me. If I hadn't gotten some medicine to relieve it, I would have gone crazy. From now on, just hide in here. The walls and the shutters let it, they'll never find us. I'm not so sure. Those creatures, they leave radioactive traces. Sooner or later, they will be picked up. Planes. How low they are flying. Oh, I think it was a mistake not to get rid of that walker when we had a chance. It's a mistake we can remedy easily enough. I'll stop them. I'll make them ground every plane and pull out every truck looking for us. Go in and fix up that stoolie. I want to send one of them out. Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. feel certain it's Buchanan who's behind all this? For my money, it is. Killing Franchot completed the pattern. What about those other two, Banning and uh, whatever his name is? Done. We put them in the county jail. They'll be safe there. It's the first time that Gunsell ever begged to be put into jail. He was scared stiff. He isn't the only one. Yes? Call for you, sir. Personal. The party says it's important. Hello? Yes, this is Chief Camden. You will stop all planes and trucks searching for radioactivity. I will give you until 3 o'clock this afternoon to do this. If you do not, many people will be killed exactly one hour later. Who is this? Who is this? There will be no other warning. Hello. 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 They hung up before I could put a tracer on it. There is a warning to withdraw all our planes and trucks equipped with radium finders by 3 o'clock. Or else. What do you mean, or else? He, or whatever it was, practically threatened mass murder one hour later. What did the voice sound like? Sort of mechanical. What do you think, Dr. Walker? Could he, or they, or whatever these creatures are, could they do this thing? There's no definite knowledge as to what they can or cannot do. Then they must be stopped. How? But... Our only chance is to find their source. But if we pull back all the planes and trucks, we'll never find the source. Give in to Buchanan now, and there's no telling what he'll ask for next. You think they're bluffing, Chet? They could be, but I doubt it. Captain, alert the entire force. Put every available officer on duty at 4 o'clock. I wonder just what they're trying to do. We'll find out in two hours.
Governor, I am declaring a state of emergency. All police facilities have been alerted to protect us against any further crimes by so-called atomic creatures. The state militia will assist in patrolling all traffic. All scheduled transportation shall be cancelled until further notice. If you must go outside, have identification papers with you. The radium finding planes and trucks will continue to operate since this is our best hope of locating the source of these beings. Do not be alarmed as we are confident we will soon pinpoint the origin of these emanations. All possible measures for your safety are being taken. I think we better dismantle the panel right now and get out of here while we can. Not till I'm finished. There are two more yet. Say nothing of that bright boy, Dr. Walker. But you don't even know where they have hidden Banning and Dunn. Walker, no. If we got him. Well, as a creature, he would have no memory. You know that. He's a cop, isn't he? We can use him to get the information for us. Bring one of them out right now. Dave, will you do me a favor and take my car over to the lab? Have one of the boys take a Geiger counter out of the trunk. Needs a little adjustment. All right, you can drive mine home. Thanks. I'll bring it back in the morning. Okay. Hey, what's the big idea? Identification. Oh, yes, of course, I forgot. French on. And it is Capo. We made our first real mistake, a dangerous mistake. I don't think so. What will you use Captain Harris for? The same thing I was going to use Walker for. He's a cop too, isn't he? Get him in shape as fast as you can. You ready? Yes. Let's take a look at him. cells transmit the image the creature sees on the screen and with him I have actually succeeded in stimulating the muscular impulse of the larynx so that I can activate him to speak with his own voice yes let's hear it make him say something to me what do you want him to say his name Say, my name is David Harris, Captain Harris, Homicide Squad. My name is David Harris, Captain Harris, Homicide Squad. Stag, you may be a crackpot, but you're also a genius. I think we can finish up all our unfinished business by tomorrow.
Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching Creature with the Atom Brain with Mr. Brent Anderson, comic book illustrator at large. That's me. That'd be you. Yeah. Or you could say comic book illustrator illustrious. Yeah. Um, yes. I do. That's what I would say. But you yeah. know, keep the keep the business card short. So, uh, Brent, you like this film. Tell me something interesting about this film. Well, apparently I heard that it uh, was inspired by the 1919 cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Right. It looks like it was. Yeah. Right. has that had effect to it. And that Richard uh, Denning, the uh, star, right, uh, was the, I think he, he played an official in uh, Hawaii Five-0. Oh, Hawaii Five-0. I like that program. Yeah. So, you know, you can hear that beginning drum roll mm -hmm. and you know exactly what the song is. He was also the star of uh, the Creature from the Black Lagoon. He was in the Creature of the Black Lagoon. He wasn't the guy in the suit. No, of course not. He was the hero. Right. The right. handsome hero. I mean, the guy that handsome, he just can't put a suit on. That would be silly to put a, a, a handsome man. Although, you know, I did meet Rico Browning, and hmm. you know, he did not have a face made for radio, so I think, you know, they got him for the athletic portion. That's true. He was. Portion, because yeah. I suppose swimming in that suit would be somewhat rather difficult. Anyways, another copy of Astro City Metro Book 2. And this is just chock full of wonderful imagery. And again, all drawn by you. Drawn by me. And, and the, so, stories, the stories are wonderful. So Astro City, is this uh, an anthology or is it one big story? It's an anthology. All right. So all kinds of different tales. And uh, you could pick up any one of these and not need to see the prior one, right? That's right. Right. No, that's good. That's good. This is fantastic work. And uh, how many of these have you done so far? To date, over 110 issues. Separate, separate This is not page one stories. issue though, right? No, no. So that's a collection. This is a collection. Yeah. So if we were to put these all in books like this one, how many books have you done? Mm, ultimately, there'll be about seven. With goodness. 20 issues in each book. You do this 24 hours a day, do you not? Yes. My goodness. Pretty much. <laughs> and you were telling me during the break that you uh, not so recently went to digital, where you do this all with a... a, a 13 years. Right. 2010. Pen. I got my first uh, digital tablet and right. working digitally. I, I like it for reasons that I wasn't having to get up and wash the pixels off my hands every 10 minutes. Oh, I don't, right. I don't yeah. like getting pencil all over my hands. Right. So no, what did I become a pencil? face and it's <laughs> all over your face. And yeah. no, that makes sense. No. So, so you got. plus you can, you can fix things easier, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Undo. 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 Right. You don't like that stroke? Undo. And, and the digital bits are, are less expensive than I suppose the lead that you have to place inside of your pencils, right? No, the uh, programs and the computers and the tablet costs a lot of money. <laughs> oh, so what, what program does one use to do these? I started out with Corel Painter 11. Right. And I now work in Clip Studio Paint. Clip Studio Paint? Paint. I've never heard of this. It used to be Manga Studio. Right. That was for manga comics. Right. Designed for manga comics. And then they expanded their repertoire of... So this is a program development. strictly for making comics. Pretty much. Interesting. Now, it's better than like trying to take Photoshop and make it happen, right? I couldn't work in Photoshop, which is why when Corel Painter was introduced uh, to me, I just jumped right. on it. Yeah, <laughs> right. That did it. All right. What do you say we wrap up this film? Yep. And when we come back, uh, we're going to find out what Brent Anderson is doing next. All right. Very good. All right. Off we go to the end of Creature with the Atom Brain. Don't go away when you see the credits roll because we're going to finish up with Brent. Tangelo will be here. I'm going to say wonderful things to you and you don't want to miss that. So stick around.
Who is it? I am Captain Harris. Homicide. It's Uncle Dave! Why so formal? I'm Captain Harris. Homicide. Hello, Uncle Dave. Daddy isn't home. He just left. I'm baking a cake for Penny. It's her birthday. At seven today, going on eight. Excuse me, will you? My cake will be ruined. Gosh, your hand is cold. Sit down, Uncle Dave. I want you to see what Mother got for Henrietta. See? She got him a dress, panties, socks, and shoes. Don't you think they're beautiful? What's the matter, Uncle Dave? Cat got your tongue? Where is your father? I don't know. Ask your mother. Mommy, Uncle Dave wants to know where Daddy is. You went to see Chief Camden, Dave. Something about those two men involved with Buchanan. Those two you're keeping in the county jail. What are their names again, Dave? You know who I'm talking about. Fanning and Dunn. That's it. You sound terrible, Dave. Are you sure you feel well? Penny, keep away from him. He may be coming down with a cold. Here, hold him together for me. Time to feed her. Chet had a brainstorm this morning, Dave. Something about giving out phony information as to where those two men were hidden. He thinks Buchanan will send out one of those creatures to kill them, and then you can capture him. But he'll tell you all about that when you see him. Penny, what are you looking for? Where's in the end, bottle? Here it is. Now, please stay out of the kitchen. I'm busy enough as it is. Said to get in touch with him immediately. This is 13F1 calling from frequency two. Inform Dr. Chet Walker that Captain Harris is at the county jail. KMA 367. Hello, Captain Harris. Glad to see you again. Yeah, we're getting tired of looking at one another. How long do we have to stay holed up here? Being with him is like being in solitary. Well, if we can judge by the progress the police are making, we may as well resign ourselves to spending the rest of our lives together. That may not be as long as you think. What's wrong, Captain? Oh. Captain! You off your rocker? I'm Frank Buchanan. You're cracked. You ain't Buchanan. You're Captain Harris. I am Buchanan. I told you I'd see you die. Hi, Dave. Joyce called me. Why in the world did you... Dave, what's eating you? Slow down, Dave. Attention all cars. Lester Banning and Tom Dunn found murdered in county jail. Police Captain David Harris, suspect. 
proceeding south with Dr. Chet Walker in yellow convertible, license number 27H4926. No. Proceeding south with Dr. Chet Walker in yellow convertible, license number 27H4926. Smash up that car. Smash it up. Did the car crash? It must have. And both are dead. Only one can die, Mr. Wicken. Dr. Walker, you all right? Have Chief Camden rush a helicopter to pick up Captain Harris and take him to the city hospital. Yes, sir. And tell him to have Dr. Norton stand by. Right. Muscular movement extremely strong. Extraocular reactions missing completely. Reactions similar to those of animals subjected to strong amygdaloid stimulations. Got that? Thank you. The x-rays of the skull. These will bring us a few steps closer to the solution. Will you follow me to my office, please? The doctor, stay here and let me know should the patient's condition change. Amazing. What are the small protrusions on the end of the dark lines? Electrodes. As you see, they are grouped in patterns. Everyone is connected with an amygdala circuit. You used that word before. What does it mean? the small lobes projecting from the underside of the cerebellum. All our body movements originate from there. These nerves stimulate muscular impulses. That's how the body gets orders from the brain. Muscular impulses. The larynx is a muscle, isn't it? We certainly move it by muscular contraction. That's why those creatures are able to talk. If the right stimulation activates the amygdala circuit, they will speak. There's no question about it. But they're not aware of what they're saying. They're not aware of anything. Those discs in front of the eyes are sealant cells. What makes you think so? Electric impulses produced by light. They could very well be transmitted back to a, well, let me call it a receiving station. What would that mean? If the image on the retina could be transmitted, then someone would be able to witness whatever this creature is seeing on a screen. But that's impossible. Look here. What is it? You see, a few of the very fine wires have been broken loose. That's why the creature is impassive. He's moving. He's trying to get away. We can't get through to him. See? Some of the electrodes must have been broken, but he had that accident. The oscillograph doesn't register the impulse. His eyes are open. Does he see us? I don't know. We don't go any closer in case the sealant cells can still transmit light images. Maybe you can lead us to them, Dave. Maybe you can... It's just a hunch, but I think he's trying to return to his source of energy. Look, see how he turns? As if trying to find a certain direction. Watch it! Let him go. I'll follow him in the helicopter that brought us. Tell your men not to interfere with Captain Harris if he takes a car, even a police car. Let's hope he leads us to the source before his energy runs down completely. Try to contact him. If he has any energy left at all, he'll return to replenish it. The radium in this tube, wherever he is, this will attract him like a magnet. Captain Harris leaving hospital area. Important. Do not apprehend. Over and up. Camden, come in, Camden. This is Camden. 
I can see 557. Have your men keep out of his way. He can only see what is in front of him. Clear? Over. Clear. Over and out. Take her down. Fly about 500 yards behind 557. Patrol car 557 passing 3rd Street area. Important. Do not apprehend. 557 turned onto Foothill, proceeding south. Caution them to follow and not interfere. We'll advise when 557 reaches destination. Over. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. Once the radium is exposed, the gamma rays might spread over the entire city. We can't even blow open the door or the windows. It would be too dangerous to try it because of explosion. Look at him! 
Those are the bodies that were stolen from the morgue. Kill them. Kill them. have to sever the electrodes to stop them. of energy remaining, he's still trying to reach the source. Got here. Look at that. A birthday present from Uncle Dave. Isn't that pretty? Ooh, but isn't he coming? No, no, I, I'm afraid uh, he'll he'll have to be away for a while. Why? I'm not mad at him anymore. It's not that, Penny. It's it's business. Look, Penny, why don't you name your new dolly Henrietta the Second? No, I'm going to call her Dave. Dave? What well, Dave's a boy's name. That's a girl doll you've got there. I don't care. I know. I'll tell all my friends she's a tomboy. <laughs> well, guess that ought to do it, huh? All right, Benny. See if you can blow these out now. Here, Daddy. Hold Dave for me. All righty. Take a deep breath now. Come on. Oh. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. And so ends Creature with the Atom Brain. You know, the way he smashed everything, I've seen you do that before. No, she's she's she could she could kill those those zombies cuz she knows how to smash things. It's I you know, I don't know if it's a talent. I suppose if you've got zombies controlled by equipment, then uh, Tangela can help you out. But uh, anyways, you like the movie? She, of course, she likes the movie. She likes zombies. 
Now, she tries to make her own zombies. She, she, she goes to the cemetery and she pulls out bodies and next thing you know, she's got them upstairs and she's trying to hook them. You know what the problem is though, she never gets a fresh one. Right? You cannot reanimate a, a brown corpse. That's, that's my theory. If it's, it's shriveled up and brown, no, nope, it's done. <laughs> There's no bringing that back. Anyways, fun movie. We will show it again in 2.7 years or something like that. That's how we tend to repeat films. But uh, what's, what's next for Brent? For me? Well, I'm currently working on a graphic novel, right? Which fits right in with your um, atmosphere Tell me more. here. Go. It's a it's a Mexican horror story. Well, I you know I, I think that's a unique idea, but I don't see how that uh, is similar to us. Well, it involves the spirit, the jaguar spirit, from the central oh, Mexican gosh, highlands. Show me, show me. <clears throat> oh, this is gorgeous. El Jaguar, is that how you say that? El Aguar. El Aguar. I never took Spanish. I could speak some French, but yeah. uh, oh, this is gorgeous. And you're doing all the drawings on this. Now, yeah. these are all tiny comic books. What's this? These are chapters from the much bigger work. The, the bigger work will be probably 150 pages long. Oh, my goodness. So this is almost like uh, when movies do like a, a test roll. Or something yeah. like that, mm -hmm. right? You wouldn't sell them like this, right? Oh, would you? I, you do. I, I distribute them as promotional material. Oh, yeah. nice! This is wonderful, and you're sticking with just black and white, no color. So there far. may be color, but we haven't got a publisher yet. Well, maybe there's a publisher sitting out there watching the show, and if there is, <laughs> Brent Anderson, how do we find out more about you? Well, um, my website. You can go yes. to my website, brentandersonart.com. Brent Anderson or dot Calm. And you can contact me through the mail there. Right, right. Can they buy things? Yeah. So our audience can go to brentanderson.com and they can purchase some of these or some of these? They can get uh, commissions. They can buy original artwork. They can buy books. Copies um, of your hat. Can they get copies of your hat? No, that's a one of kind. One item. of a kind. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm sure there's going to be two or three blokes out there that want a hat like that. So maybe, maybe you can like do a little online manual on how you can create your own. That would be a good idea. That would be a wonderful idea. All right, well, thank you so much for coming tonight, Brent, and uh, visiting us. Next time you're in town, come see us. And as far as you guys are concerned, thank you so much for sticking around and uh, watching us instead of that uh, other film. That film was probably had a bad ending, whereas ours had a happy ending. And, uh, it was a happy that, ending, yes. It was a happy ending. And next week, uh, we'll have a different movie, different guest, and uh, it'll be fun. See you then. And don't forget, we love you. See you next time. So, uh, Brett, you know, I was thinking, with this kind of work you do and this, this beautiful illustration, perhaps you can make a book similar to this about uh, our story. Yeah, but it'd only be about that thing.